Hey, welcome to a new video. Disney seems to be the happiest place on Earth, but it's no secret that it's also surrounded by dark events. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 30. Kilimanjaro Safaris is the largest Disney attraction in the world, spanning an enormous piece of land equivalent to 110 soccer fields. Disney has put in significant effort to create this amazing attraction, and what's even more interesting is that the idea for it actually came from none other than Walt Disney himself. He played a significant role in conceiving this attraction. When Disney was in the process of planning Animal Kingdom, Walt's dream of a genuine wild adventure came to life, except for the trees. The beautiful baobab trees you see on Kilimanjaro's safaris are not actually real. They're made of concrete. In reality, baobab trees have incredibly strong trunks and can store water, especially during extended periods of drought. There used to be a real baobab tree in Disney's Animal Kingdom in Harambe Village. Unfortunately, the beautiful tree didn't survive after a very cold winter a few years ago. Number 29. Every evening when the Disney park closes, approximately 200 cats are released to stealthily roam around its sacred grounds. Their extremely important mission, you wonder? To keep the house population in check, ensuring that the park always remains clean and beautiful for all visitors. No one really knew where all these cats came from, but people first noticed them in 1955. When Disney was creating the castle walkthrough attraction, a group of stray cats suddenly entered the castle and decided to stay, along with a multitude of pesky fleas. Fortunately, Walt Disney came up with a clever solution. Initially, they attempted to adopt the cats. Meanwhile, Disneyland, due to its outdoor nature-like setting, had its own issue with a large number of mice. They quickly realized that cats were highly effective at catching these mice and were unafraid of humans. So they decided to keep and care for the cats. To ensure there wouldn't be an excessive number of cats, they were captured, neutered, or spit and they were turned to the familiar spots. The amusing thing is that it's not just cats that assist Disney in combating mice. Ducks, geese, and lizards also contribute. Number 28. Upon entering the Disney park, you will see the firehouse apartment of Walt Disney himself. Rumor has it that Walt Disney still haunts this place today. This was Walt Disney's favorite apartment where he would often stay, and when he was there, he would always light a lamp in the window to mark his presence. But even after he passed away, Disney's employees claimed they had often seen a lit lamp in the same window. Some cast members even say they would hear footsteps and sounds coming from the apartment at night. The creepiest story was told by the cleaning lady. While cleaning the room, she noticed the light was on, so she turned it off. When she went outside, the light was back on. So she went in to turn it off again, and after she did, she heard a faint voice saying, I'm still here. Number 27. You may not consciously recall having seen it, but rest assured you've encountered this green color before. Its purpose is to seamlessly blend into the surroundings, making it nearly imperceptible. This light grayish cool shade of green, known by various names, is commonly referred to as go away green. Over the years, observant Disney Park visitors have noticed this color on fences, fire hydrants, pipes, and trash cans. Its purpose, to merge with the environment. Go Away Green is a combination of various shades of green in the area, sometimes spanning multiple palettes. It includes a mix of brown, gray, and green hues that your eyes instinctively overlook, in contrast to the vivid construction orange that grabs attention. Go Away Green works in the opposite way. Its goal is to blend into the spectrum of colors that your eyes perceive, making it nearly invisible. Did you initially notice this color too, or did you overlook it like millions of others? Number 26. During the mid-1950s to 1957, Werner Von Braun collaborated closely with Walt Disney on a series of influential films that popularized the concept of human space travel. These films, including Man in Space, captivated an astonishing 40 million viewers and ignited a collective fascination with the unknown. However, as we delve into Werner Von Braun's background, we discover his Nazi past. Coming from a German-American background, he was a prolific aerospace engineer and space architect. In Nazi Germany, he played a crucial role in the development of rocket technology and worked diligently with the country's rocket development program. Werner Von Braun in particular contributed to the country's rocket development program. He contributed to the design and co-development of the revolutionary V-2 rocket during World War II. The Moonliner is a rocket ship that stands as a prominent symbol in Disneyland's Tomorrowland. It was designed by John Hench, with the assistance of Werner Von Braun. It was intended to depict what a commercial vehicle would look like on the moon in the then distant year of 1986. Number 25. In this video, we see an employee checking an attraction when suddenly we see a translucent figure sitting in one of the seats. The story goes that this is the bellhop ghost from the Tower of Terror attraction, but this wasn't the only incident that happened at the Tower of Terror attraction. One day, a visitor was recording some videos of the park, when he turned the camera towards the top of the attraction and saw a transparent figure standing there. 
According to several people and Disney cast members themselves, it must have been the ghost of the bellhop. The story goes that the bellhop was working at the same spot called Platform Delta when he suddenly fell to the ground for no apparent reason. No one knows why he died unexpectedly, but one thing is certain, he still haunts the floor where he used to work. As creepy as the story is, the staff maintains that the ghost of the bellhop is completely harmless and doesn't hurt people. Number 24 Within the enchanting realm of Walt Disney World lies a hidden gem that even the most frequent visitors may have never seen. Originally intended as Walt Disney's personal apartment during his family visits to Orlando, the Cinderella Castle suite was never meant for the public. Unfortunately, Walt passed away before it was completed, leading to the suite being converted into storage and a workspace for Disney World's telephone operators in the subsequent decades. In 2006, during the Year of a Million Dreams promotional campaign, the suite was unveiled as Cinderella Suite. As part of this campaign, Disney awarded a limited number of overnight stays in the suite. However, the suite cannot be booked nowadays and it's rumored that Disney has turned down bribes of up to $40,000 for a single night. In the past, the suite was occasionally offered to select individuals, including celebrities like Tom Cruise, Mariah Carey, and Kevin Jonas. The 660-square-foot suite is inspired by 17th-century French castles and features coffered ceilings, stained-glass windows, and exquisite furnishings. Its layout includes a foyer, a parlor, a bedroom, and a bathroom, each adorned with unique details hand-picked by Disney's team. It's also whispered that famous guests in the past received their own glass slipper as a parting gift. Number 23 In Walt Disney World, there's no traditional prison, but rather a temporary holding facility known as the Disney Jail. It serves as a detention center for visitors who violate park rules, such as engaging in illegal activities or exhibiting dangerous behavior. Instead of creating a public spectacle, Disney prefers to handle such matters discreetly behind closed doors in their Disney Jail. However, it's certainly not a place anyone wants to be during their Disney vacation. Disney has strict rules and regulations that all guests must adhere to, and as a private property, they have the authority to enforce them. Actress Blake Lively recalls her visit to Disney in her youth, describing the jail as consisting of entirely white rooms where everyone wears white clothing. Depending on the nature of the incident, Disney security will detain offenders in their office until they assess whether further action is necessary. Number 22 it's not just ghosts that are creepy when you walk around the Disney park. The swamps and other waters around Disney World in Orlando, Florida are home to about 1.25 million alligators. That's also why the park had to post signs here and warn the guests that alligators could be anywhere. In 2016, an alligator incident happened in the park that took the life of a young boy. He was scooping water with his bucket in the Seven Seas Lagoon, not knowing that an alligator was in the same lake. To prevent something like this from happening again, the park not only posted extra signs, but also enlisted the help of wildlife catchers to help capture and remove the alligators. As of the year 2021, they would have already removed at least 226 alligators. Number 21 Behind the scenes of Disney's enchanting attractions and rides, a team of specialists work with a level of secrecy reminiscent of the CIA. Their expertise lies in the art of illusion, where seemingly robotic pirates of the Caribbean come to life before your eyes. One of Disney's recent successes is the lifelike Navi Shaman at Disney World. However, their latest creation could be the most endearing yet. During the International Conference on Intelligent Robots and Systems in Detroit, Disney unveiled a bipedal robot. This robot can walk on its own and even maintain perfect balance when pushed or navigating treacherous terrain. The 3D printed construction showcases the remarkable technical skill of the team. In less than a year, they brought this charming robot to life. Its movements are not only functional, but also expressive, with the ability to mimic emotions through body language. Number 20 This next video footage was shot in 2009 and has been shared several times on the internet. By the way, it's one of the most famous ghost sightings in the Disney park. As we can see, there's a transparent figure walking through the park which is recorded by four security cameras. The story gets more interesting, however, because there's a rumor that this figure is Walt Disney himself inspecting the park. The security cameras captured in a fascinating way how the alleged ghost walked through the gate and made his way through the park. Some say it must have been just a reflection of light, but others claim the walking motion is too precise. But others claim the walking motion is too precise to just be a reflection. Number 19. Incidents and accidents can occur at Walt Disney World's famous theme parks, including Magic Kingdom, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom. As we know, Disney is willing to do anything to ensure that guests stay in a happy bubble. However, the police officers on duty there are not as visible as you might think. Instead, they blend into the crowd in khaki clothing, behaving like any regular parent strolling through the park. So it won't be a Captain America-style soldier coming your way. These undercover agents are certified and trained in the art of disguise. 
They navigate the park with the primary goal of ensuring guest safety and preserving the atmosphere Disney's known for. Their inconspicuous presence allows them to respond quickly to incidents without disrupting the magical experience cherished by guests. Number 18. Space Mountain is loved by many people for its thrilling and one-of-a-kind vibe. The indoor roller coaster offers a rocket ride in an extremely dark cave while passing by the stars, constellations, planets, and other celestial bodies. But few people know that they can also encounter a ghost in this attraction. The cast members named the ghost Mr. One Way, and he would sometimes appear in the cave unnoticed. Other times, perhaps he feels like taking a ride. He doesn't wait in the cave, but seeks out a single rider and then accompanies him or her on the ride. But interestingly, he then disappears before the end. That's why his name is Mr. One Way. But according to park staff, there's another ghost that haunts the Space Mountain building. Her name is Disco Debbie, the glowing green lady. Number 17. Beneath the glitter and glamour, the life of a princess at Disney is not always as idyllic as it seems. A former Disney employee revealed what life really entails for a Disney princess. Sarah Hag, a former Disney princess who portrayed Rapunzel and Belle, shared her experiences after being laid off during the COVID-19 pandemic. She worked for the company from 2016 to 2021 and recorded a five-minute video to reveal certain aspects of the job that were previously secret. According to Sarah, one of the most notable revelations is that Disney's princesses are prohibited from discussing their work outside their designated roles. The company also monitors what employees share on social media. The process of being cast as a princess can be traumatic, as it's primarily based on appearance. Characters are expected to maintain a specific body shape and adhere to strict guidelines. Sarah revealed no tattoos, extra piercings, no visible tan lines, also no nail polish colors. Furthermore, the princesses are evaluated every eight months to ensure they still fit the character profile, meaning they maintain a youthful appearance and the same body shape as when they were first hired. The pressure to be constantly happy can take a toll on the princesses. Sarah expressed the difficulty of working at Disney, where it's not allowed to be sad or show negative emotions. Number 16. Tucked away on an eerie hill just outside the Haunted Mansion in the Walt Disney World Resort lies a pet cemetery. This unique cemetery is inspired by the popular pet cemetery at Disneyland Resort, originally created in the 1980s. Like its predecessor, Walt Disney World Resort's Pet Cemetery features tombstones adorned with witty epitaphs. Among the tombstones, visitors will encounter intriguing inscriptions paying tribute to the beloved animals buried here. One tombstone depicts a dog with a basket of flowers named Rover, with the epitaph, every dog has his day. Unfortunately, today was your last. Another memorializes a snake with the words, met his fate at the hands of a garden hoe. Rest in pieces. The grave of a duck named Waddle tugs at the heartstrings with the epitaph, Little Waddle saw the truck, but Little Waddle didn't duck. The pet cemetery also includes a poodle named Little Maisie, whose tombstone reads, So neat and tidy and never lazy. All you do now is push up daisies. Number 15. Another favorite Disney attraction is the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction, and there's an age-old rumor that some of the skulls and bones seen in the attraction are real human remains. Cast members also claim that the attraction is haunted by a ghost named George. Although Disney says it has removed all human remains in the attraction, some people claim there is still a real skull. As for the ghost remains of George, cast members say he was also a former cast member who died in the early 1970s while working on the set. They often see George on the attraction's monitors and sometimes hear footsteps and phone calls in an empty control room. The cast members also greet George with good morning and wish him good night. Because if they don't, George causes the operation of the attraction to be disrupted. Number 14. In the bustling world of Disneyland amid the crowds, there's a distinctive scent that permeates the air. Whether you find yourself in Pirates of the Caribbean or strolling down Main Street, USA, the scent reaches your nose, evoking a sense of familiarity and nostalgia. Scent plays a crucial role in the Disneyland experience, as it's intrinsically linked to memories and emotions. But how does Disney manage to create such an intangible yet essential detail? Let us introduce you to the Smellitizers. The Smellitizers are the unsung heroes responsible for infusing the air with enchanting scents that enhance the park's sensory experience. From the sweet scent of vanilla wafting through Main Street, USA, to the subtle aroma of burning wood in Spaceship Earth, and the invigorating blend of ocean air and orange groves in the various versions of Soarin'. Disney's scent machines use a relatively simple yet effective technology to transport guests into a world of heightened sensations and unforgettable memories. But how do these scent machines work exactly? The concept is straightforward. Disney's smellitizers involve strategically placing a scented substance, whether actual popcorn or an artificial fragrance, between a powerful airflow source, such as a fan or compressed air, and the audience. By intermittently turning the airflow on and off, the scented substance is gently dispersed. Number 13. 
On November 10, 1940, media giant Walt Disney was recruited by the FBI to become a spy within his own animation studio. From that moment until his death, he served as an informant for the Bureau, actively providing information about his own employees and sabotaging union movements by labeling them as communist troublemakers. During this period, Disney was enjoying a golden age of success, thanks to the heyday of animation. Mickey Mouse had debuted in 1928, and Disney had already achieved hits with films like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937, and Pinocchio in 1940. Meanwhile, the FBI was concerned about communist elements within the United States, as the country grappled with the decision to get involved in the war unfolding in Europe. Reports of Disney's cooperation with the FBI can be found on the Bureau's website. But what did Disney gain in return for his cooperation? Apart from political benefits and protection, Disney was granted special access to film inside the Bureau's headquarters. Disney even allowed FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover to contribute creative ideas for certain projects. Number 12. In the summer of 1976, Disney opened its first water park, River Country in Bay Lake, Florida. However, in 2001, after several new water parks opened, River Country was temporarily closed. But in 2005, Disney announced its permanent closure, making it the second of only two theme parks to close permanently in Disney's history. Since then, the park was not maintained and was left to decay. Some claim that the reason for this closure was the incident in August of the year 1980, when an 11-year-old boy died after contracting a rare amoeba infection in the waters of River Country. A teenager also reportedly drowned, and another drowning incident occurred in Bay Cove in 1989. River Country has been abandoned for 17 years now, but rumors say that the music still plays at times and lights go on and off. Number 11. In the magical realm of Disney exists a fascinating secret, buildings cleverly hidden in plain sight, often overlooked by visitors. Disney has mastered the art of disguise, using colors known as Bye Bye Blue and Go Away Green to ensure these structures fade into the background. These ingenious colors have been specially designed by Disney to not catch the casual observer's eye. Disney strategically employs these colors to prevent unsightly spots from disrupting the magical atmosphere of their theme park. Trash cans and construction fences often sport these colors. Epcot in particular has numerous show buildings painted in Bye Bye Blue, effectively camouflaging them from prying eyes. From a distance, the buildings are indistinguishable from the sky. Number 10. Have you ever marveled at the seemingly contradictory experience in Disneyland where everything appears both large and small simultaneously? The visual achievement is no accident. It's a deliberate creation achieved through a technique known as forced perspective. Buildings and objects are constructed to appear larger than their actual height. The first floor of a building adheres to the standard scale, while the second floor is shrunk to 5 eighths of the size of the first, and any subsequent floors are further reduced. When guests stand on the ground and look up, the building appears to be three stories tall. The most evident use of forced perspective within Disneyland can be observed on Main Street USA. As guests enter the park, their eyes are drawn to Sleeping Beauty Castle, seemingly far away at the end of the expansive street. However, when exiting the park in the opposite direction, the same street appears shorter and more manageable. This illusion is achieved by positioning the right side of the buildings closer to the park entrance to look wider. Number 9. Disney never has a shortage of conspiracy theories. One of them is Club 33. Club 33 is actually a private dining club found in several Disney parks. It first opened in 1967, and it had a VIP lounge theme. No one knows why it was called 33 but some say it must refer to the club's street address or the number of its first sponsors. Others claim it was so named because of Walt Disney's connection to Freemasonry or the Illuminati. Rumors say that only the most elite could become members of Club 33. Annual membership, which first opened in New Orleans Square, cost $12,000, not including a $25,000 initiation fee. It's also said that there's a 15-year waiting list for anyone wishing to join the club. Number 8. In 1958, Walt Disney Productions released White Wilderness, a nature documentary as part of its acclaimed True Life Adventure series. Directed by James Auger and narrated by Winston Hibbler, the film was shot in location in Canada and received critical acclaim. It also won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature and the Golden Bear for Best Documentary at the 1959 Berlin Film Festival. However, White Wilderness is not without controversy. One scene in particular has become infamous, depicting an alleged mass migration of lemmings culminating in hundreds of these animals plunging into the Arctic Ocean. The narrator explains that these lemmings are simply trying to cross a large body of water during their journey, but if it's too far, they become exhausted and can drown. In 1982, CBC aired a documentary titled Cruel Camera, revealing instances of animal cruelty in Hollywood productions. The host exposed that these scenes were actually filmed near the Bow River in Canmore, Alberta, and that a small group of lemmings had been transported to the location and coerced into leaping off a cliff. Number 7. 
Have you ever taken a moment to notice the abundance of flags and banners adorning Main Street USA in the Magical Kingdom Park? This fictional town, inspired by Walt Disney's hometown of Marshland, Missouri, immerses visitors in a sea of red, white, and blue. But what may surprise you is that most of these flags are not authentic official flags, but cleverly designed props known as bunting. Unlike real American flags, these buntings do not adhere to the strict guidelines set out in the US flag code. While they resemble the stars and stripes, they typically have 9 to 12 stripes instead of the usual 13. And their number of stars varies from 40 to 45, instead of the standard 50. This allows Disney to maintain a consistent visual narrative on Main Street, since these flags don't need to be taken down in inclement weather, or flown at half-mast or illuminated at night. While these buntings may seem purely decorative, they also serve a crucial purpose. The tall poles on which they are mounted act as lightning rods and provide protection for guests below. Speaking of flags, since the opening day of Walt Disney World, a flag retreat ceremony has been <laughs> a flag retreat ceremony has taken place at Town Square. Number six. Have you ever heard that Disney has creepy underground tunnels? Disney calls these underground passageways the Utilidor system. Utilidor is actually short for utility tunnels, and they're not as creepy as you might think. Walt Disney arranged for a system of tunnels through which cast members could walk to and from the designated posts, hidden from the guests. The tunnels also connected to dressing rooms and the cafeteria. Another odd factoid is that the cast members used to have to wear special underwear that the park gave them. The reason would be to avoid damaging the costumes this way. Pretty strange, don't you think? Number 5. When embarking on a magical adventure in Disney World, it's essential to prepare for the inevitable crowds and long lines that await you. With thousands of visitors coming to the parks at any given time, long queues are an unavoidable reality. The Fast Pass system is your key to bypassing those endless lines. You can select specific times to experience your favorite attractions without having to endure the lengthy wait. Fast Pass ticket holders gain access to a separate queue that takes them directly to the front. This means you can save valuable time that would otherwise be spent in line, allowing you to maximize your enjoyment of other activities in the parks. One of the fantastic benefits of the FastPass ticket is that it grants you access to one of the four Disney World parks at no extra cost. This means you can explore the magic of multiple parks while optimizing your time and fun. To take advantage of this incredible feature, make sure to make your FastPass reservations online at least 30 days before your visit. If you're staying at a Disney resort, you have the added advantage of being able to make FastPass reservations 60 days or more in advance. You can also save more time by downloading the My Disney Experience app. Number 4. Guests eagerly anticipate the nighttime sky illuminated with the enchanting tunes and magic of Happily Ever After in the Magic Kingdom, and the dazzling fireworks of Epcot. However, weather can often disrupt Disney's nighttime spectacles. Heavy rainfall or lightning poses a safety risk and prevents the fireworks from being launched. Disney's initial approach is to delay the show for as long as possible, in hopes of a weather break, allowing guests to still enjoy the fireworks. There's times when the weather refuses to cooperate, and the theme park must close before the show can take place. But what happens to all the preloaded fireworks? Disney cannot use fireworks that were loaded the previous day due to safety regulations. However, as soon as the weather clears up, even if there's only one cast member in the park, Disney seizes the opportunity to perform the originally planned fireworks show. Number 3. Since its grand opening in 1971, Disney World has captivated visitors with its magical allure. While Disneyland has only recorded 25 deaths, the grim number at Disney World's totals 63. The first death at Disney World occurred in 1974 at Magic Kingdom, when a construction worker lost his life in a minor explosion. Among the various causes of deaths, natural or unknown causes have claimed the most lives, totaling 23 deaths. Many of these cases were attributed to heart attacks or strokes that could occur during an intense ride or simply while walking through the park. Accidents totaling 21 deaths range from mishaps on attractions to tragic drownings in pools. One disturbing example involved a two-year-old boy who was attacked by an alligator. Another shocking incident occurred when an 11-year-old boy contracted a rare and deadly illness from water with amoebas in a water park. Unfortunately, over the years, 15 employees have also died at Disney World, some as a result of falls from great heights. Number 2. When a woman was in the Haunted Mansion attraction, one day she took a picture, and when she looked back a moment later, she noticed a creepy boy. It was a small boy who seemed to be peering back from one of the doom buggies. According to her, she could not remember a little boy or have seen anyone in the queue. Interestingly, cast members recounted a story from 1994, when a woman asked the park if she could scatter the ashes of her deceased seven-year-old son in the Haunted Mansion because it was her son's favorite attraction. Disney denied the request and instead gave the family extra time at the attraction. But according to the story, the woman would have scattered the ashes anyway. And according to the employees, the ghost in the photo could have been this boy. Believe it or not, but it's actually a common request from Disney guests to scatter the ashes of a deceased person in the park. 
Sometimes guests don't even ask permission, but cast members catch them in the act. Number 1. When Walt Disney embarked on his first venture outside of his highly successful animated films, he did not know that the opening day of Disney World would be remembered by park employees as Black Sunday. While the ABC television network broadcasted the opening ceremony, employees worked feverishly to hammer and paint. The live broadcast, true to Disney's penchant for fantasy, presented a carefully orchestrated spectacle. It included a patriotic opening ceremony and a minister's blessing, followed by a tour. The event was co-hosted by Ronnie Reagan and featured performances by numerous celebrities. However, many attractions were still under construction. The scorching sun caused the newly laid asphalt on Main Street to melt, trapping women in their high heels. The park was also overcrowded with nearly 15,000 people, twice the expected capacity. Additionally, there was a long traffic jam on the Santa Ana Freeway, where people were stuck in their cars or had to relieve themselves along the roadside due to the delay. Disneyland's refreshment stands and three restaurants also quickly ran out of food, making the park's opening far from an immediate success. Have you ever been to Disneyland or Disney World? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.